Tonight, I'll be talking about voting 2020 and end times. Voting 2020 and end times. Now, what does the Bible have to say, especially when we look at today's events? There's a lot of controversy, anger and heat and debates coming up about uh, today's elections that came out. All right, let me know when I'm out of bounds. Hopefully that this is all clear volume and everyone can watch and listen. So what does the Bible have to say about voting and end times? Is there a conspiracy? Is there uh, people, are there people involved that can manipulate the populace where they can vote for a wrong person? And will it be something insidious later on where it will fulfill the new world order system and the Antichrist? And let me tell you something that the Bible has the answers and it has a lot of interesting things. Does the Bible ever talk about uh, vote manipulation? Absolutely. And we're going to give the evidences his, uh, from the Bible. So let's look at the Bible. This happened throughout history. So let's look at the book of Judges chapter 9. Judges chapter 9. Notice that there was a certain person who manipulated the people to get their votes. And then they ended up with their wrong leader at the end. Look at Judges chapter 9. And then we'll read verse 1. And Abimelech, the son of Jeroboam, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren and communed with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether is better for you, either that all the sons of Jeroboam, which are threescore and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. And his mother's brethren spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem all these words. And look at this, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, he is our brother. Who are the type of people who would vote for a wrong leader and be manipulated and be gullible people? Does such a thing exist? In this verse, there are such a group of people. Look at verse 4. And they gave him three score and ten pieces of silver out of the house of baal Beareth, wherewith Abimelech hired vain and light persons which followed him. So yes, there was a time in the Bible there were vain and light or gullible, vulnerable people who were manipulated by a person to vote for him as their leader. And guess what happened? If you keep reading the Bible about Abimelech, if you keep reading the Bible about Abimelech, it shows that the people, they ended up with the wrong leader, catastrophe, their leader died tragically, and there was bloodshed within the kingdom. So that's not good. The next one is 2 Samuel 15, please. 2 Samuel 15. Is there another case where basically that votes are stolen, so to speak? Would the Bible use something like that, where the votes are practically stolen so that a wrong leader can come in to overthrow the current leader. You hear what I just said? Is there something in the Bible where the peoples that their votes become stolen to elect a wrong leader to overthrow the current leader? Is there a text? Yes, 2 Samuel chapter 15. Look at this one. The Bible says that uh, verse 2, And Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate, and it was so that when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment, then Absalom called unto him and said, Of what city art thou? And he said, Thy servant is one of the tribes of Israel. So notice right here, see, this leader is trying to target what geography, uh, demographic area the person is coming from. Studying the person out so that he can steal that person's vote. Let's keep reading. Verse 4, Absalom said, moreover, Oh, that I were made judge in the land, that every man which hath any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. If I were elected as leader, I would promote social justice. Oh, if I were elected as the leader, and let's keep reading. Verse 6, And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment, so Absalom stole 
the hearts of the men of Israel. How about that? Why? Because he was trying to steal them against King David. He was trying to overthrow King David. So throughout the Bible, we have seen several cases of vote manipula uh, manipulation. We see that with Abimelech. And then we see that with Absalom. All right, the next one you want to go to is 1 Kings chapter 1. 1 Kings chapter 1. We're going to look at the book of 1 Kings chapter 1. And here's another example of vote manipulation. Is there a case in the Bible where a certain arrogant group of people because they love this leader so much that they want to elect this leader so badly that they want to say immediately and prematurely and indignantly that this guy is our leader he is declared to be leader and it is prematurely and it is done where it is not declared officially and rightly done so properly done so. Is there a case like that in Scripture? Absolutely. The Bible has all the answers. Let's look at another person, Adonijah. Look at 1 Kings chapter 1. Notice what Adonijah did. The Bible says over here at verse 5, Then Adonijah the son of Haggith, look at this, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared him chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. So notice that he declared himself to be, I am going to be king. I am king. I am a leader. I'm already elected to be so. Is that what happened? Well, keep reading over here. Notice that uh, verse 11, Wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, saying, Hast thou not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggith, what? Doth reign, and David our Lord knoweth it not. See, they cons Adonijah already told a bunch of people, shot up his mouth, I'm already elected as king. And then the word has already spread and all the dumb populace was manipulated thinking, Adonijah is king. He's already elected. Adonijah is king. Oh, I didn't know that because the news media said so. Oh, he is, uh, he is king. Yeah. Now, now look what happens. We're going to look what Bathsheba said. She's going to say at verse 17 to David, who is king, and she said unto him, My Lord, thou swearest by the Lord thy God unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. And now, behold, Adonijah reigneth. And now, my Lord, the king thou knowest it not. The king got mad, so what did he do? He said, No, he's not king. I never uh, elected him to be king. And then he said, Have the people cry out, Solomon is king. God save King Solomon. So we see that case. So this is, uh, if people are upset what's going on right now, if you just read your Bible, Amen. if you would just read your Bible, this is not something new. This has always been going on ever since throughout history. Um, what's that quote, church, that I would keep telling you so many times, what men learn from history? Is that men never, is that men never learn from history? Yes. <laughs> is that men never learn from history? You're like, Yes, yeah, fast. <laughs> All right, let's look at uh, 2 Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians 2. Is there a leader who uses manipulation to get the vote of the people and the people actually don't care about the truth? They don't care about the truth because they're comfortable with a lie and they don't care if it's a lie as long as they get their leader. Is such a person possible? Yes. The Antichrist, all right? You notice all this starts with A all of a sudden? A, 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 A. You know what that stands for? Ah, get out of there. That's what it stands for. All right, let's look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Notice at verse 8, And then shall that wicked be revealed, the Antichrist. Notice what the Bible says about him at verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Look at this. How does he get the votes of the people? And with all what? Deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because why? They don't care about the truth. They prefer to be deceived. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them what? Strong delusion that they should believe a lie. The Antichrist, by then, CNN and 
NB, uh, NBC and Fox News, yes, Fox News, and all the other news outlets, by that time, they're all going to say this. This guy should be president of the United States. This guy should be the ruler over our world, the new world order system. This guy, blah, blah, blah. And they're going to use uh, all, they're going to pull up every professor out there that they can find. Yeah. And they're going to use every politician they can find. And every national election committee that they can find. So that they can send a strong delusion that, hey, this guy is the right leader as your president. As your leader. Good teaching. By that time, they'll already, they'll be doing that long, long later. I mean, if people are shocked about what's going on right now, what's, what's going on, give him more time when the Antichrist comes out. It's going to be way more than that. Now, believe it or not, believe it or not, the last one is going to shock you even more about voter manipulation. You might say, how so? Well, think about this. Let's pretend that everyone had a perfect kingdom, okay? And let's pretend that people see within a perfect kingdom that everything's going right, this is the way things should be done, and everyone lives happily ever after. And let's say the proof and the evidence of that lasts for about a hundred, maybe a thousand years, okay? <laughs> then what happens is, do you think that people are content? No, they, they still want to believe a lie to overthrow their leader of that time, no matter how much he proves it with 1,000 years of a pure paradise, and they will allow this wicked being to deceive them so they can try to overthrow their current ruler. Guess what? Revelation chapter 20. Satan. Satan will do that. The greatest manipulation of winning the votes of the people, getting them on their side, is the devil himself. Is the devil himself. Look at this. I mean, the evidence of a thousand years, Satan deceives them. Isn't that amazing? That's strong manipulation right yeah, there. Right. That's strong control right over there. That's some kind of deception, man, that he did. Whatever he did, he pulled it off. <laughs> Revelation chapter 20. Look what the Bible says. Verse 7, and when the thousand years are expired, that's a thousand years of kingdom peace under Jesus Christ. That's the current leader of that time at Revelation 20. Jesus Christ rules for a thousand years. They get pure paradise. So people should not be stupid enough to listen to the devil, right? Wrong! <laughs> Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom, you won't believe this, is as the sand of the sea. That's how many people get manipulated and controlled and deceived. How about that? So we see the Bible, very interestingly, showing proof of voting manipulation. But not just that. What men learn from history is that men never learn from history. Look at history itself from the B.C.s all the way to the A.D.s. Look throughout time. We've shown you portions at the B.C. section through the Bible, right? Now let's look at a historical perspective. Are there cases of voting manipulation and that powerful dictators and wrong leaders would love that? Well, this is uh, from the article by World Atlas. It's called The Most Rigged and Corrupt Elections in Modern World History. And the, one of the biggest cases that you'd probably hear is Adolf Hitler. So let's look at Hitler over here. So this is nothing new. We've seen this throughout history and throughout time. Fire degree and enabling act Germany 1933. Adolf Hitler convinced the German president Paul von Hindenburg that the parliament needed to be dissolved on his first day as the chancellor of Germany. The construction was amended to give Hitler and his cabinet the powers to enact laws without involving the Reichstag. The enabling, the enabling Act also gave Hitler the plenary powers and abolished most civil liberties. The Enabling Act was enacted by the Reichstag where non-Nazi members were threatened thereby voting for the act against their wishes. Only some of the Social Democrats voted against the act because they were kept away. So notice that there, throughout history, there has been infamous, wrong, or plainly evil dictators and leaders who would like to manipulate the votes of the people. 
This is a famous one that a lot of uh, people would use throughout online from Joseph Stalin. And the quote is, it's not the people who count that vote, it's the people who count the votes. So in other words, it's not the majority people, it's the people who are taking care of the votes for you. So that's the power. Now, uh, some conspiracy theorists, they kind of got overtly motivated, and this is why I keep telling you that you have to keep uh, critiquing and making sure with all sources. So actually, that's not the exact quote from Stalin that some people would use. It's only part of a translation, because Stalin historians never heard that quote. But some version of that from Stalin is true, actually. So some part of that is true, because Stalin was quoting this because this quote or the, shares the same ideology that has been used by other leaders throughout history, other people. So let me show you some other people. Napoleon, who is from the famous Napoleon Bonaparte's family, he said this, I care not who casts the votes of a nation, provided I can count them. From the New York Times editorial, 26 of May, 1880. Another one is, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this person's name right, Anastasio Somoza. That's a Nicaraguan dictator. 1896 to 1956. He said this, Indeed, you won the elections, but I won the count. That's the 17th of June, 1977. But there are many other quotes and even uh, movies and plays that shared that same ideology of the quote. So Stalin, he may not have said that word of word, word for word, but he shared some version of that. So that's the idea. So we see that throughout history that this can be common then. This can be common. Concerning about voting manipulation or getting people to their side. We see Napoleon, we see other dictators involved. So if this has been seen throughout history, I mean, what can you do against to overthrow the evidence of history? That cannot happen today. We, uh, it doesn't happen. Voting manipulation never happens. They don't study history. They don't study the Bible. Vote and voting manipulation happens. It happens. Now, I'm going to give you uh, some honorable mentions, which is pretty, pretty interesting. So, a lot of people, they're be, there's this controversy about was uh, votes being manipulated during the 2020 elections concerning about Joe Biden against Trump. What I'm going to show you is this. I'm going to show you symbolisms behind the scenes where it might be pretty disturbing and you might think, wow, did that symbolism actually occur? Man, that's satanic. So obviously symbolisms, they're not literal proofs, so you can find connections with everything. But nevertheless, these are interesting symbolisms I'm going to show to you. <laughs> So first of all, when Joe Biden was running for presidency, uh, you notice that, I don't know if some of you received this text to where you can support Biden, but the text number is 30330. He was running at year 2020, right? While he was running for year 2020, if you're going to think of something satanic, you divide that by 666, Guess what it equals to? It equals to 3.0330. <laughs> That's kind of crazy, isn't it? <laughs> Here's another one. Uh, Biden's famous slogan is Build Back Better, right? As Dr. Upman mentioned to Bible believers, study words that uh, go with B, right? If you study words that go with B, you'll see a lot of satanic things. Build Back Better. B, B, B. Think of, uh, think of a number that can, that's the only number that can fit with this letter. Three. You can put 3, you can put 13, you can put 6. 13, if you know your Bible, what's that number used for? That's a bad number. Yeah. That stands for rebellion in the Bible. Judas Iscariot matches with 13. Uh, you also see the number 6. That's the number that can possibly fit also over here as well. It's crazy stuff. And 13 and 13. <laughs> but again, this is not uh, literal proof, but this is some, wow, some strange symbolism. That is some interesting symbolism when you look at that picture. How do you figure that out, right? Here's another one. Now, this is even more wacky, all right? You ready for this one? This is, uh, this is w probably the wackiest symbolism you're going to see. So if you take the name Joe Biden, 
Yeah, here we go. You ready? You ready for the wacky one? This is, this is getting really wacky here. You ready? Okay. If we take, uh, if we take J and O together, let's switch this J upside down, and then we put the O together, we get 6 over here, right? You get E over here, right? You can also put this E, look, it's an upside down what? 6, right? See that right there? It's an upside down 6. Look at that. So we got the first three letters that can go 6-6, six, six, right? If we mention this too, this 6 that fits with the B, we get 6-6-6. Six, six, six. But you got Iden, right? Mm -hmm. But then if you want to put like identity over here, 6-6-6 oh. six, 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 identity. That's crazy, right? <laughs> That's the wackiest one over there. That's the wackiest one you want to put over there. Here's another one over here, all right? Now, this, get, ready to, get ready to laugh bigger, all right? Get ready to laugh bigger. <laughs> Kamala, yes, Kamala Harris. Oh, yeah. So notice over here, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Take her title, Kamala Harris, Vice President of the United States. Six words. <laughs> man, if it keeps on going, man. It's a scary thing right there. See that? So then you get six over here, six over here, and then you get six words over here, and then finalize with six. So here are some examples of crazy symbolism. <laughs> here are some interesting notions where people see satanic connections uh, throughout this presidency. So this went uh, all over online. This was uh, from a famous uh, Global uh, Globe Award winner, uh, John Boyd. And the title of the video, this is found in the channel Secular Talk on YouTube. The title is Lefts, Leftists Are Satan and Biden Stole the Election. He was like trying to point out that siding with Joe Biden and their uh, presidential running on their side, that's what Satan is going for. But another interesting interesting pointer over here where people think that there are satanic connections with what's going on at the current presidency is actually when Lady Gaga Lady Gaga did a performance trying to promote Joe Biden for president and the title of the article from says Joe Biden is her new Pennsylvania guy in electric campaign performance. Now, I don't know if you studied, uh, if you looked at Lady Gaga's performances, especially with Abramovich, but if you looked at that, you'll notice right over here, man, that's, when you look at some of her performances, that's, that's satanic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is not the right spirit. And uh, if you dig up, her performances, especially with that woman Abramovich, then you might go, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? Another one is, very interestingly, Pope Francis. Pope Francis, if you recall in previous videos too that I pointed out, he did his famous speech where it sounded like, and even the leftist uh, news media admitted that it looked like he was attacking Trump and that when Biden became president that the Catholic Church that they were owed to joy the second Catholic president in the United States this is big for them yeah. ever since JFK so this is big for them but when they declared that I don't know if the news journals did this deliberately or they weren't thinking but another strange quinky dinky <laughs> which is kind of wild is they showed the picture with that headline of Pope Francis meeting Joe Biden at one of the satanic places that you can think of within the Vatican. Can some of you guess? It's that Pope Paul VI audience hall where it all looks like a snake. Did you see that? The artists or the designers did it in a snake pattern. And you can see like two eyes over there and it looks like a snake. But what's even more disturbing is that their Jesus statue that they put in the front with the Pope sitting on the throne and the Jesus coming out like a nuclear bomb coming out that's what they designed to make it but if you look at that statue of Jesus and everything surrounding it it looked like a it looked everywhere like snakes 
The newspapers recently show this picture of Biden and the Pope shaking hands, smiling at a portion of what looked like the Pope Paul VI audience hall. Now, those are some uh, strange quinky dinkies that you might go, wow, satanic over there. Weird stuff. But again, these are not literal proofs over here, but I thought that they would be some interesting symbolisms for you to look at. But let's look at some of the things over here concerning about the voting uh, takeover. The big controversy is what? It's concerning about dominion, right? So probably some of you have heard about that. Dominion has become a subject of controversy that they had to publish in their own website to defend themselves. So when they were defending themselves, the Trump campaign, they accused Dominion of vote manipulation and fraud. So I looked at uh, everything concerning that. And I will have to admit, if you look at skeptical lenses, I can't believe everything that the Trump campaign is saying. But neither can, if I use that same fair skeptical lenses, neither can I believe what the leftists are saying too. So over here, it's, uh, what I'm going to point out is not actual proofs of vote manipulation. What I'm going to give you though is rational skepticism. So if you actually believe that oh, there is no vote manipulation involved over here. If you have that kind of mindset, then you, you're ignoring rational, rational skepticism. So it's proper to use that rational, skeptical thinking, not just on conspiracy theories, which I admit. So that's what the leftists are saying. You gotta use critical thinking. You can't just believe easily when they pour the information to you, but you gotta do the same thing with the leftists. And then when I put that lens, then it comes up with proper right questioning over here. Now the first one, which I still don't see it yet, a lot of news are trying to debunk uh, this, the uh, One American News uh, network because it's a pro-Trump uh, news network. So there's no doubt about that. I think it's, uh, uh, it's located in the San Diego region. Chanel Rion, who was uh, posting on the news, the title of it is Dominion Izing the Vote. And they brought up a lot of uh, skeptical questioning and some documented cases on can we truly believe the voting system of Dominion. And a lot of the, uh, there were some parts that the liberal news outlets, they were able to explain away and debunk, but other stuff they haven't yet. So that's why I still come up with these questions that I want them to answer. But one guy, which is very disturbing, a guy who worked for Dominion, his name is Eric Cooper. Now, Eric Cooper, if you dig up him, but then he took down all of his personal info now, yeah. see? But this guy, he supposedly graduated from Berkeley. He acted like an intellectual, a nice guy in the business. But then when you looked up his social networks, and that's what One American News pointed out, they point out all these instances in his social networks where he was cussing out Trump, he was cussing out the conservatives, and he even uh, threw away rational reasoning. He says, I'm all for debate, but you guys are impossible, and then blankety blank you, forget debate, etc., etc. So then this guy was in charge, uh, one of his tasks was being manager and security of the voting processes uh, machines of Dominion. And what is even, uh, even more scary is that a lot of people are criticizing uh, Gateway Pundit for the conspiracy theories, but these guys were the ones who posted actual videos of Eric Cooper teaching and showing that manipulation can be done to the voting machines, and then he would even demonstrate some instances. So that was really disturbing over there. And I don't see, an, uh, I don't see any debunking to that one yet, not even Snopes. Snopes will mention about that there are some things that they have yet to clarify. So, man, that's pretty disturbing, especially a guy, look, if you get a guy like that who's working on Dominion machines, I mean, uh, you, don't you think you have a right to be skeptical? And if you don't believe that, then what if you have Donald Trump in charge of your voting machine? You think the leftists are going to believe, believe that guy then? No, they have a right to be skeptical. But here's another one. Some more questions can be asked. Uh, AON pointed out in their uh, news source where... Dominion supported a lot of money to certain Democrats and had connections with Pelosi and Clinton and et cetera. 
So that was pretty disturbing itself. The answer toward that that they would give is that, well, no, it's nonpartisan. I mean, it doesn't support any side. What it does is that it just it supports, it gives donations, it gives supports to both parties. That's what they'll say. That's their argument. Their argument is, well, that's just normal. It's just normal with lobbyists and other companies that they'll do it with both sides of the party, not one specific party. But look, it doesn't change this fact. There's something that I have a genuine question on, all right? They might point out some uh, Republicans that Dominion might support, not just Democrats. But there's one thing that disturbs me, okay? One thing that disturbs me is you got a guy like this who's anti-Trump. That's the key. And not only that, liberal news sources even admit that. They even admit that there are left-wing people and even Republicans who may disagree each other on ideals, but they all band together on one thing, anti-Trump. That's the key. See, that's, see, they're throwing these terms to kind of throw you off. Like, no, it's not Democrat. It supports both parties. No, that's not the point. The point is, just like this guy, something's anti-Trump here. Anti-Trump. Because here's the thing is that, um, I'll tell you what would easily dismiss Dominion's uh, bias. You know what it is? The easy way that Dominion, uh, we can clear Dominion of this, of their bias, is they give a donation to Trump currently during this year. Then you, then you proved yourself, see? Then you proved yourself. They're not. Why? Because they have a right to use their money on the people they want to support. See that? So use your head. People are not using their heads here. It doesn't change about bias, see? It doesn't change about bias. Another thing to think about is when we look at Daniel chapter 7 and 11. Didn't you know the Bible talks about this case that we looked at? Interesting word, right? Dominion, where it grants you and it picks you the ruler who's going to take care of your country. Guess what? The Bible says that about the United States of America. Whoa! No, it did not say that. Yeah, it did. It did. Let's look at the book of Daniel, and we'll look at chapter 7. We're going to look at chapter 7. Now, I'm not going to explain this animal here. If you look at my Revelation studies, especially my study on seven-headed dragon and ten-horned antichrist, I've shown you that the leopard in Daniel chapter 7 is the United States. Daniel chapter 7, verse 6. After this I beheld, and lo, another like a what? Leopard, which had the back of it four wings of a fowl. So just like the United States of America, right? So taking for granted this is the United States of America, the beast also had four heads, and what? Dominion was given to it. Interesting wording how the Bible would put that there. So I'm not pointing out from this verse that the Bible predicted about a voting machine named Dominion. But I am pointing out something interesting here, that dominion, that word itself, is the one that picks the power with the United States of America that the Bible talked about. Voting machine system coincidentally just took the word dominion for itself. Maybe later on they're going to change that name. <laughs> Let's look at another passage over here. It is true, though, that dominion is given and it's not a democratic setup when the Antichrist takes over. That one is factual. That is factual in scripture. It's not going to be done in democratic form. It is going to be done through manipulation and it is going to be done through control. Let's look at Daniel chapter 11. Daniel 11. So this is all done through manipulation and this is not done by the democratic setup. This is not done by majority votes. Let's look at Daniel chapter 11. Notice how the Antichrist takes over at verse 21. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not, look at this, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom. See, they're not giving him the kingdom. So he has to take it by force. The majority don't like this guy, but he's going to have to take it over by force. Look at this. But he shall come in what? Peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries, like all politicians do. What do you think Hitler did? Didn't he do that? Yeah, but was his setup a fair democratic setup? No. Look at verse 22. 
Uh, let's look at verse 23. And after the league made with him, he shall work what? Deceitfully. It's not honestly. When he builds up his empire, his power, it's all done through deceit. Not honest. For he shall come up and shall become strong with a what? Small people. Look at that, right? The world deceives you thinking that the majority of the world, they're all for Biden and they're all for this leftist. They're all for the BLM riots. But these guys just number uh, uh, just the hundreds and they just take over and terrorize thousands of people in a city. So you see that? That's what it is. It's the terror done through a small number of people, not done from majority. Look at that. So that happens in the Antichrist kingdom. In the Antichrist kingdom, what he will do is that he is doing it not through honest means. He does it through deceit and he does it with rising to power through a small group, small number of people. Hmm. <coughs> but if you doubt me further, let's just, uh, let's just be fair. Okay, let's just be fair. Let's go to the extremist side, the extremist liberal side. Okay, I'll be so fair that I'll go to the extremist liberal side. So a lot of you know Cenk Uger. Cenk Uger, he, where he's famous with his leftist ideologies and promotions, especially on YouTube. Guess what happened? Uh, you can guess when Trump became president, what do you think the leftists did? They did the same thing like the conservative people did today. You know what they did? It's, there's something going wrong with the voting system. You know, there's a manipulation. Recount and do that. See, there's no difference. There's no difference. This is uh, Cenk Uger at uh, 8.56 a.m. at his Twitter account dated December 19, 2016. He whines, verify the vote. It's insane that we can't check to see if anyone hacked into the voting machines. Let's change that. Oh, and you call that conspiracy, huh? Conspiracy, conspiracy. But now look at him today, November 22nd, 2020, 11.50 a.m. Donald Trump is in the middle of trying to steal this election. He very, very clearly lost. He is asking state legislators to not award the electors of their states to the person who won. This is a political goop. This is what dictators do. This is happening right now in America. Oh, what happened? He clearly won. He clearly won. <laughs> See this? There's no difference. Double-mindedness. They just want their guys to be supported. But here's more evidence. John Oliver, whom you all trust, you dumb millennials trust, because he tries to point out documented facts with humor. He even pointed out in November 3rd, 2019, which has over 5 million hits on YouTube, Voting Machines Tonight with John Oliver. You know what he tries to point out? That it's not dependable. <laughs> that it, uh, there, it could be hacked. That you can manipulate votes with the machines. Wow. Wow. Not only that, CNN did that at 2006. Uh, here's the title of the uh, video by David Bui. Lou Dobbs on CNN in 2006. Smartmatic. So Smartmatic was one of the big machine systems that a lot of people think is involved concerning about the voting, uh, about the voting controversy at 2020. So the title of the article is Lou Dobbs on CNN in 2006, Smartmatic based in Venezuela, sold to Dominion top officials in Venezuela. So if you look at that video, CNN even pointed out that they were mad at Smartmatic and then uh, other voting machine companies and, and Dominion itself, where you can hack, there is possible voter manipulation, and they're not dependable. They're not trustworthy. And this is a disgrace and an outcry, CNN. But when Lou Dobbs comes out again today, they all say, you're a conspiracy theorist. Calm down. <laughs> because Lou Dobbs, he uh, switched the network from CNN to a different network now. But here's another one. Even the New York Times... Uh, posted the article, U.S. Investigates Voting Machines Venezuela Ties, article by Tim Golden, October 29th, 2006. Here are other arguments that aren't disputed yet. Now, they couldn't be disputed, but uh, what I've seen so far, they haven't been disputed yet. So somebody's got to give an argument against them if these arguments are fallacious. 
One is from ANC's article, Mark Malik Brown admits license agreement between Smartmatic and Dominion. So a lot of people, they're trying to uh, criticize about Dominion's ties with Smartmatic so that there was no such thing as some kind of uh, communist or dictatorial agenda or influence involved. But if you look at that video, uh, Mark Malik Brown, he admits license agreements. And then when you study license agreements, you know, you wonder how much will the businesses agree with each other so that they can fulfill their purposes. This is from the report, November 15, 2020. So look at that YouTube video. But here's another one, which I didn't hear a criticism yet against. This argument hasn't been disputed yet. So a lot, a lot of them are trying to debunk from One American News, that pro-Trump network, a lot of the sources and the pointers that they argue against. So they debunked some of them, but here's one they didn't do yet. Chris Krebs, the one who was in charge of cybersecurity, and he gave the quote, he defended the voting system as the most secure election in history. Now, when you have a person who actually words it that way, that just makes it sound more suspicious. This has been the most secure election ever in all of history. It's as if, why would you say that, all right? But let's give the guy the benefit of the doubt, all right? Let's give the guy the benefit of the doubt. But in the election committed, commission, the election commission, where they were defending the voting procedures, one, uh, one American News pointed out the one who co-wrote that with Chris Krebs was Dominion itself. <laughs> so I need to hear an argument about that. Until then, you've got, these are rightful questions. See, I'm not saying they're proofs, but they're rightful questions that demand answers. And you can't just be gullible and say, oh, let's ignore these questions, right? Then you're the gullible, you're the ignorant. You're the one who believes everything, whatever they say. Uh, trust your leaders. Uh, trust these guys. Trust these scientists. I, I implore you. I thought the purpose of higher education, that in order for us to earn the trust of these teachers and leaders, is to use critical thinking, skepticism itself. That's the goal of it. Uh, Fox News. Uh, a lot of people are so upset and they claim that Fox News is becoming liberal itself because they declare, they dismiss the rightful skepticism and they call Biden as president. But it makes you wonder, here's another rightful question to ask yourself. Is it because of their owner, Rupert Murdoch? Because he said this uh, many weeks ago before uh, the presidential election vote. Title of the article from Business Insider, Rupert Murdoch, whose media empire includes Fox News and the New York Post, is predicting a landslide Biden victory over Trump. Makes you want to ask. Now, here's something that's intensely interesting. Go to Isaiah chapter 5, verse 8. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 8. We're going to look at the book of Isaiah chapter 5, and then we'll read verse 8. Now, it's important to understand that some people might think over here, oh, you're trying to make people vote for Trump, etc. No, you've seen plenty of my videos already, all right? I told you that uh, it doesn't matter if you vote for Trump or if you vote for Biden. The devil, he's going to bring his Antichrist kingdom either means or either or. Even uh, during Ronald Reagan's presidency, did you see the world getting a national revival and souls getting right with God and the church is spreading? Or was there still greater apostasy? Never change the fact of greater apostasy. So this video is not some kind of political agenda on trying to get a person to vote. It is simply a video that gives rightful criticisms and trying to look through a biblical perspective. That's all it's doing. That's all it's doing. It's giving rightful criticisms on what? Both sides of the party, which I've always done. Amen. That's what it is. That's what it is. It's not trying to get people to... Uh, vote for something. One interesting thing is that unless the math has changed or the statistics have changed, so this could be old, but then uh, what we see over here is that Biden, he won a record low of 16.7% of U.S. counties 
despite recording the most votes in history. So a lot of people are like, wait, 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 what? And they're like, that doesn't make sense with the votes. So then if you're going to think more specifically, it could make sense when you study the electoral college voting system and et cetera, how you can get those numbers is through uh, the means of these groups. See this here? The cities, which can make up the minority of the counties, but you get tons and tons of people. Now here's the simple, let's use some logical simple thinking here. If you're in charge of a territory and terrain, and you have a huge influence over these people, then can't these people be the powerful people that can control the votes? That's something to think about. Think about all the schools in, uh, use your heads now, this is a no-brainer. Think about all the schools in the cities, right? The Hollywood celebrity, the media outlets in the cities, right? Now, use your brains now. In cities, do you think they're mostly conservative or they're mostly liberal? They're mostly liberal. And not only that, the Bible warned that why was it against cities? The Bible was against cities originally. You might say, why is that? Because God knows that when mankind tries to keep uniting, secular humanism builds up. And secular humanism builds up where they would vote together and agree upon together that would be anti-God. You want the evidence? Tower of Babel. God says scatter, divide, spread out. The people said, no, let's unite, stay together and build us a tower that would reach heaven. And God's like, nope. And he shattered that. But let's look what... Look at what the Bible says about cities. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 8. Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field. Why? Till there be no place, that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. See that? That's what cities do. What cities do is that when you build house to house and then there's no place left, why? So that they can be alone. They can be the ones dominating the world. These guys. See that? But is it true that cities on the earth, they will be for the Antichrist side? Yes. Look at Revelation 16. Revelation 16. Cities around the world, mostly cities around the world, they'll join the Antichrist side. Look at Revelation 16. So this shouldn't shock you about cities had a big play. That cities are important for the, this voting procedure. You know why? Cities have a huge influence, especially for the Antichrist. The Antichrist, when he wants to fulfill his purpose, he's gonna, you, the cities are going to be supportive of him. So he has to focus on the cities here. Let's look at Revelation chapter 16. We'll look at verse 19. It encourages you living in the cities, right, of San Francisco Bay Area, Silicon Valley. So encouraging, right? Great inspiration for all of us. All right, let's look at Revelation 16, 19. And the great city, that's Babylon, was divided into three parts. But look at this one. And the cities, see plural, of the what? Nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. If you know cities, they tend to be more anti-God. They tend to be more about toleration of all sorts of strange beliefs and even Satanism itself. Very, very sad. If you look at the World Economic Forum, it's very scary. But if you look at the World Economic Forum, they have a quote. And what they have an ideology and a kingdom, which would be very helpful if the world continues going where it's going, where basically... The quote is, welcome to 2030. I own nothing, have no privacy, and life has never been better. The World Economic Forum, they show you these four steps, which is scary. And basically that people own nothing. They want a socialist setup. They want a setup where the government controls everything, no private property. And then after that, drone, this gets even weirder. They mentioned the next step, drones would deliver the items to your door. And then the machines and technology would start to advance and take forward. And you go, are they nuts? And if you doubt me, look at the World Economic Forum. It will scare you. Now, if you look at the, what is very interesting 
concerning about the retaliation against of what's going on, the controversy, the other side, they want to try to fight back. So if you actually look at www.supremecourt.gov slash about slash circuit assignments dot ASPX, if you look at that website, it's the official website where it shows certain judges going to their certain circuits. And it is very interesting that if you look at the battleground swing states where Trump uh, lost, the, lost the battle and where it was very needed, the conservative judges are actually going toward those areas, four of them. Michigan, Brett Kavanaugh, Wisconsin, Amy Coney Barrett, Pennsylvania, Samuel A. Alito, and Georgia, Clarence Thomas. So these are conservative judges. So I don't know what's going on because what happened was the Trump campaign just kept bringing case after case to try to prove because they have to bring the burden of proof that there was voting fraud. Can't just bring rightful skepticism and criticism. They have to prove it. So that's a lot of work. So by doing that, the local courts and judges, they kept rejecting, rejecting because the witnesses, even though they claim that they have lots of witnesses, the witnesses, they, their stories contradict each other. So see, sometimes, you know, when you hear the other side that may be very pro-Trump, you can't just believe it easily either. So all I'm using is skeptical lenses throughout this whole process. So because the judges, they keep throwing these cases, uh, they keep ignoring or they don't want to take these cases, it may be interesting if these four judges went in these battleground states, if something big might happen. I don't know. It might happen. Last thing I want to close is this. Go to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. I would like to close it with this. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. You all know Trevor Noah, and you know, man, these uh, comedic uh, talk show hosts, all they, th they think that they're so funny, and they go anti-Christian, they go anti-conservative, anything that's anti-Trump. But this guy, this idiot, tweeted on November 3rd, and uh, what did he joke about? He joked about killing and burning millions of people in Florida. You might say, how? He disguised it through comedy. So how he disguised it through comedy so that he can get you suckers to laugh is that he tried to put this Darth Vader Death Star, and he said, does anybody have this machine yet? And then the Death Star, you know, it shows them pumping it up, shooting and blowing up all of Florida and burning. And then people are like, saying, oh, that's so funny. No, what an idiot, man. Funny, la you, you notice that? We're in a generation that's so conditioned now that the first tendency would be to laugh when you watch that. But I imagine if Christians did that, if Christians posted a tweet about that, do we have this kind of weapon yet and then drop an atomic bomb on some liberal cities? How do you think they would respond? If we drop a bomb on a gay pride parade or in a Muslim mosque, and what do you think the, the what do you think they'll do? They'll get they'll call you hate speech, right? They'll say you're cruel, you're mean. Well, I mean, but Trevor Noah gets away with it. You know what Christians do? We don't want anyone to get killed and burned. Amen. The, I mean, what do we want them to do? We want them to get saved in Jesus Christ, be delivered from a burning hell, Amen. and go to heaven. Amen. And that's what I want to close, is for you to get saved. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I would like to close it with that. Would you receive the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation? The point of this whole video was not to talk, was not to get you to vote for a certain side, but it's for you to see throughout scriptures all this information, to have rightful skepticism. But the most important thing that you want to do is to get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ.